Hey guys, Bit the Brain. Today I want to show you a few things you can do on your Mac. I'm running Yosemite, but this can be done on Mavericks or any previous editions of Mac OS X to optimize your system and hopefully increase speed performance. Now you may be having a spinning beach ball or your system seems kind of bogged down in general. Do these things, these simple procedures, and hopefully you'll see increased speed performance on your system and that spinning beach ball will go away. So the first thing we want to do is look at our desktop. Now, some of you may have dozens or hundreds of items on your desktop. The thing you have to remember is your system has to render all these images. So that could be bringing down your system right from the very get-go. You want to go ahead and delete all the items on your desktop that you don't need and take the rest Create a folder and stick those items in that folder. It declutters your machine, it's easier to find stuff, and it should increase your speed performance on your machine. Now the second thing I want to look at is in your downloads folder. So often people will download an install file, they install the application, and they'll just leave the file in their system. They may do this for weeks, months, even years. They may download an ISO image, which often is several gigs. They'll load that instance on their VirtualBox, Parallels, VMware Fusion, and they'll never get rid of that ISO image. So that can take up a lot of space very quickly. So it's a good practice to, once you install that application, go ahead and delete that file. Now I'll say over and over again, I'm a big fan of decluttering. Speaking of decluttering, Let's go to System Preferences. Go to Users and Groups. Now let's say you have an old account in here, which I've called this account Old Account. You want to get rid of that account. Let's say it hasn't been used in years. Okay? Go ahead and delete that account. But the first thing you want to do is actually find the files and folders you may need off that account, and pull them off there, and then delete the account. So let's go to users, let's go to old account, which is this account right here. And let's say I want to pull some items from the documents folder, or maybe the desktop too. Just highlight old account, command I, click the padlock. We want to put in our username and password. Now you have to be an admin account. Your current account has to be an admin account to be able to do this. And let's go and add myself to this list this account here you can see right now I can read only but I want to be able to do more than that I can make myself the owner I can give myself read and write privileges I want to apply to all enclosed items and I see just like that I can see all the items within here so if you have plans to delete this account do this first go throughout all these folders find the stuff you need once you grab it, it's as simple as deleting this account. Now it's going to give you the option. You can see this here, save it to a disk image. Don't delete the home folder. So this would delete the account, but actually leave the home folder in here. We'll leave this in there, but we don't want to do that. We've already pulled what we need theoretically. So we can go ahead and erase this. Now you see it's gone from Finder. It's gone from here in users and groups. So let's say we want to delete an application. Now often people would just highlight applications and just click delete. So let's say I want to delete TeamViewer. Now I don't know where all these files are associated with this application because when you install something, this is usually not the only file that's installed on your machine. There's other files associated with that application that are dispersed throughout your system. So the best way I find to delete applications on my system is to go to what is called App Cleaner. So you see App Cleaner right here. Double click on App Cleaner. Now I want to delete, let's say, what's something good to delete here? Something I don't use. Team Viewer. I don't use this hardly at all. So highlight this, put it over to Drop Apps. And it's searching for all the files associated with this. Now you see several of them here. Most often it's going to put files in the library folder. Uh, the library directory is a common place for application files to reside. 
and this team viewer application is no different. So we're going to go ahead and click on delete, put in the password, and all those files are deleted. And then team viewer is also deleted. And you have a clean uninstall from your system. Now another thing I want to show you is crap cleaner. Now this has been very popular on Windows machines for a while now. I just started using this on uh, Mac machines about a year or so ago. But it basically is a nice little housekeeping tool. I have the free version so you can go through and just run best practice cleaning sessions on your system, on your browser and your system. So let's, let's say for instance we want to analyze the system, it'll quickly go through find files that it recommends we get rid of. As you see here, I've run this recently. I don't really have a whole lot of stuff, but this is a fairly fast process. Okay, that's done. Certain tools. Now we can also run an uninstall from here if we wanted to. Um, our startup. This is actually very convenient because we're able to see the items that are on startup. If you want to erase free space, you can do that from here, repair permissions, which you can also do in disutility on your system. But basically just have a go with this, play around with it a little bit. There's a lot of options here. Um, you could download Crap Cleaner. You can download it right here. This is the Mac version. Right here you see it's free. Now you have to do everything manually. And as you see right here, there's no check for real-time monitoring, automatic browser cleaning, party support, but that's okay. It gives me what I need, and it's free. Now, the other application that we were looking at is right here, and this is also free. So get both these. Run this to uninstall applications when you need it, and Crap Cleaner will do simple housekeeping duties, deleting cache files and whatnot. And these might be incremental improvements to your system that you see, but enough of them will add up over time and you should see increased performance. Okay, the next thing I want to look at, and quit this, is our cache directory. So if we go up to go, we do not see a library. We need to get library. So hold down your option key and you see, bam, library shows up. So let's go into caches and you see all these items here. Now, it's possible throughout the years you know, we're talking two or three years, you've never emptied this out. So you could have these items cached, places you haven't been in years. You don't need this stuff in there. So go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to delete it and then empty out your trash. I've seen people have gigs of stuff in there. Uh, Six-year-old machines, uh, places that have been cached, they haven't been in five years. So... If you go there again, it's going to fill up your cache again. But if you haven't emptied it in a long time, go ahead and try doing that. All right, next thing I want to look at is iPhoto. Open up iPhoto. Now often, people will delete items and they never empty out the trash. Okay? So say for instance, these two images. Very similar. I don't need both these. Hit the delete key. It's deleted. Now people do this with all their files and then they'll quit the application. But what you have to remember is this just goes to the trash. If we want to put this back, you can highlight it, hit the control key, put back. But the items in here, if we truly want to empty out the trash, we're going to have to go to empty trash. So I've seen people with thousands of files in there. People who had the same machine for years and they never empty out the trash there. That could really add up. So make sure once you delete it, go to the trash, empty the trash. Okay, let's go to iTunes. Now, sometimes within your list of uh, songs, you're going to see some duplicates. Now, to see a full list of duplicates, you could just go up to View and Show Duplicate Items. And this will show nothing but duplicate items. Now, you see sometimes, like myself, I have different versions of songs, the same song. I have some junk in here. Um, I don't really see any duplicates per se. Ah, for instance, right here, a perfect example. Now let's say I had one version that was 256 
kilobits and I had another it was like 128 usually I'll just get rid of the 128 to get this by default you won't see bitrate you have to go to view options and then show columns go beneath that and you'll see file select bitrate you can get all these options these viewable options by doing that so I'll just go ahead and delete that one that's it. Like, you know, before I did this, because I just did this myself a few days ago, I had so many duplicate songs on here. It was ridiculous. Like, I have a couple here. But you could save up a lot of space just by doing this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now, if you've done all this stuff that I've shown you and you're still getting the spinning beach ball, try this. Go down to Utilities, which you can get within Applications, Utilities, Disk Utility. Highlight your drive. You can repair permissions. Now this may take a while. I'm not going to demonstrate that because it'll tell you about a minute left and actually it'll take, you know, it could take 8, 9, 10 minutes. Now that might fix your issue. The next step an escalation is to try to repair your disk. Now you can't do it from here. You can verify the disk, but you can't repair it. You're going to have to start up in recovery mode. So you'll restart your system, and when it makes the chime sound, you know, dong, hold down your command R key, and you'll boot into recovery mode. And then go to disk utility, and then you can repair your disk. So try that. That doesn't work. Now, there's other things you could try. It's I don't know how useful it is nowadays, but you can try it. It can't hurt. You can reset your SMC. You can zap your pram, rebuild directories, defrag drives, dump log files, uh, scan and purge. There's a lot you can do. I don't really know how useful that is, those things, um, on Yosemite now. Because those older troubleshooting methods worked once in a while. But I don't know if they're too useful now. But it can't really hurt to try. Well, it usually can't hurt to try. So you can do that. But basically, if you do these best practices, you're never going to be in that spot. Things to look at and always be aware of. Keep your Mac up to date. When it offers an update, take the update. Also, be aware of all the malware out there. Or crapware. Um, these notifications, hey, your system's under attack. You need to install this now. Don't fall for that crap. Whether it be on the internet or email, avoid that. You have to be aware of Trojans these days. Years ago, Mac didn't really have to worry about that much. Mac users didn't have to worry about that. Now, within the last few years, just like everyone else, we have to keep mindful of that. So don't download crap you don't recognize. It's great if you have a hash value that you can use to verify the integrity of install files. But also just really good common sense. Now remember, keep your desktop, keep your downloads folder free of clutter. Remember, don't fill up your boot folders or your boot volume up with a lot of garbage. So say for instance, this is my... Uh, account I'm in, you want to keep your desktop, your documents, your download folder free of garbage that you don't need because it will slow down your system on boot up. Also, hey, one more thing I want to look at. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. Go to your users and groups and make sure on startup for your login items that you get rid of a lot of crap on here that you don't need. Now you saw in Crap Cleaner where it showed up with startup items. Well, on here, you can also control that. So again, you can get a dramatic increase in performance. If you you know if you've got 20 of these items on here and you scale it back to six or seven, you might know you might notice a dramatic impact just by doing that. So yeah, that's a few of the things that you can do. Simple things, just general housekeeping duties that you can perform that will hopefully hopefully increase the performance of your Mac or at least prevent it from being degraded over time. So again, yeah, that's it. Just best housekeeping duties to increase the efficiency, optimization of your system. So this is Bit the Brain. Thanks for watching.